We're about to read a story about a man who beat his own son unconscious with a farm tool and then hanged him, all for converting to Christianity. Why would a father do this to his own son? Two reasons. One, his prophet ordered him to kill anyone who leaves his religion. Two, his prophet ordered him to carry out Islamic punishments even against his own family members. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6922, Muhammad commanded, Whoever changed his Islamic religion, then kill him. In Sunan An-Nasai 4069, Muhammad commanded, Whoever changes his religion, kill him. In Sunan Ibn Majah 2540, Muhammad commanded, Carry out the legal punishments on relatives and strangers, and do not let the fear of blame stop you from carrying out the command of Allah. Now, let's do the math here. A command to kill anyone who leaves Islam, plus a command to carry out Islamic punishments even on your own family members. What's that equal? International Christian Concern reports. ICC note, an ICC source in Uganda has confirmed the following report on the murder of Tabaruka Tafiro, who was killed by his own father for converting to Christianity. The Muslim father of a 20-year-old convert to Christianity in Uganda on Sunday, August 15th, killed him for refusing to recant his faith, sources said. Kasimu Kuona of Bupalama village, Busita sub-county in Kabuku district, was not charged with murder, but a lesser charge of manslaughter because he killed his son in anger for leaving Islam, sources said. Uganda isn't even a Muslim-majority country, but they're already giving out reduced penalties for killing family members for leaving Islam. His son, Tabaruka Tafiro, put his faith in Christ in 2019. At that time, his father drove him from their home, and he went to Kampala, where he worked in a hotel, relatives said. His mother later spent several months trying to convince him to return home to reconcile with his father, which Tafiro resisted until consenting to come back on August 1st. His father was away from home until Saturday, August 14th, when he called a family meeting to question Tafiro about whether he had come back to Islam, relatives said. So, he converted to Islam in 2019, his father kicked him out, his mother convinced him to come home August 1st of this year, his father was out of town, his father got back on the 14th and immediately called a family meeting about whether his son had returned to Islam. I am mature enough to join any religion that I feel like because I am above 18 years old, Tafiro told him, according to Jamila Baluka, Kawona's sister. I want to confirm that I am saved by the grace of God. I can't renounce my Christian faith now or in the future. Kawona, that's the father, became angry but remained silent as he left the house, she said. Another relative said that the next day, Kawona returned with a knife and hoe and started hitting Tafiro, who managed to escape to a neighbor's house. He followed Tafiro and forcefully entered the house and removed him back to the homestead, where he tied him up and started beating him with the hoe, said the relative, whose identity is withheld for security reasons. He fell down unconscious. He then hanged him up. He tied up his son, beat him unconscious, and then hanged him. The wailing of Tafiro's mother and other relatives at the home where Kawona had hung his son with a rope by the neck brought neighbors rushing to the home, sources said. When I arrived at Kawona's house with other neighbors, we found the father outside the house, the area chairperson Hassan Quiri told Morningstar News. He told us that he had killed his son, who had disgraced the Islamic religion, by becoming a Christian. But this has nothing to do with Islam, right? Query and other Muslim neighbors brought Kawona, who offered no resistance, to the Bupalama police station, Query said. I strongly condemn the brutal act of killing people in the name of religion, he added. Thank you for condemning Muhammad, Hassan. The chairperson of Local 3, Siddiqui Wawire, echoed the sentiment. I was shocked to hear that a member of my area had killed his son, Wawire said. I condemn the act, and I hate anyone who takes away someone's life in such a brutal manner. Then you hate Muhammad, who ordered it. 
Police took the body for post-mortem examination. The pastor of Tefiro's church in Kampala, unnamed for security reasons, said he felt police should have charged Kawona with murder. We are saddened by the brutal death of our young convert who worshipped in our church for two years, the pastor told Morningstar News by phone. The assault was the latest of many instances of persecution of Christians in Uganda that Morningstar News has documented. Uganda's constitution and other laws provide for religious freedom, including the right to propagate one's faith and convert from one faith to another. Muslims make up no more than 12% of Uganda's population, with high concentrations in eastern areas of the country. So, why was this young Christian convert killed? Anyone with a drop of common sense would say that he was killed because Muhammad ordered his followers to execute anyone who leaves the religion, and because some Muslims actually do what their prophet commanded. Unfortunately, many people don't have a drop of common sense. People who have absolutely no common sense whatsoever will tell us that he was killed because all religions have their extremists. If by extremists they mean people who are extremely devoted to their religion, then yes, all religions have their extremists. In fact, there were two extremists in the story we just read. The Muslim extremist slaughtered his own son in the name of Allah just as his prophet commanded. The Christian extremist laid down his life proclaiming his faith in Jesus to his Muslim family. See the difference yet? This is a powerful religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah?